Hey guys, welcome to the 8th video in the C Sharp Auto Updater tutorial series. In this video, we'll be creating the Sharp Update Accept form. This is the first form that will be shown if there's an update available, and it will prompt the user to accept or decline the update. It will also have a button to take you to the Sharp Update Info form, which is the detailed view of the update that we created two videos ago. Before we get started creating that form, there is one change that we need to make to our Sharp Update Download form. I forgot to change this class and its constructors access to internal only, as well as make the event handler methods private. So if we go over to our class, let's change this public to internal. Let's change this public to internal on the constructor as well. And let's change all these void methods to private void. Now that I'm done with that, I'm going to magically insert comments. Ta-da! Alright, that's enough magic for this video. Now we're going to create the Sharp Update Accept Form. So go ahead and right click on your project, go down to Add, New Windows Form, and we're going to call this Sharp Update Accept Form, and hit OK. Now again, before we write any code, we're going to set up the form. Go to your Form Properties. The first thing we're going to do is set the font to the same one as always, S-E-G-O-E-U-I, and we're going to leave the size at 8.25. The next thing we're going to do is change the form border style to Fixed Dialog. Then let's go down a little bit to size and change the size to 352 comma 171. We'll change the start location to center parent and then we'll get rid of the maximize box and minimize box by setting them to false. The next thing we're going to do is add a picture box to the form. So go up to your toolbox, double click on picture box. In the properties tab, go to size mode and change that to stretch image. We're going to change the name of the control to picture box. Get rid of that one again. We're going to set the location to 12 comma 8. Set the size to 80 by 80 and then click on this little button right next to the picture box, hit choose image, and we'll select our update resource. Hit OK. That looks good. Now the next thing we're going to add is a label, and it's going to be a label stating that an update's available and asking, would you like to update? So go to your toolbox, double click on label. First thing we're going to do is change the size of the font, so it's going to be size 13. Then we'll change the text. If you click on the little arrow next to the text, you can get a better view if you're working with multiple line labels. So the text is going to be, an update is available. Hooray! And then the next line, would you like to update? And then we can click out of that and it will save that. The next thing we want to do is change the text align to top center. Then we'll change this label name to label update avail. Go down here, set the auto size to false. We'll set the location to 106 comma 8. And we'll set the size to 228 by 56. Now we're going to add one more label. It's going to line up right below this one. And it's going to display the update version number. So go up to your toolbox, double click on label. The first thing we're going to do is change the font size to 9. We're going to get rid of the text. Set the text align to top center again. Change the label name to label new version. Go down here, set auto size to false. Set the location to 143 comma 69. And set the size to 154 by 19. Now we're going to add three buttons to the form. One's going to be a yes button, one's going to be a no button, and one's going to be a details button. Now if we go to our toolbox, we can double click on button three times. So one, two, three. We'll just choose one of them for now, and we'll make this button yes. So the text is going to be yes. We can change the name of the control to btn yes. Now once we set the location for this button, it will be easy to position the other ones. The position for button yes is going to be 97 comma 108. Now that we have the yes button in position, we can just drag the other ones into their positions. So drag it like this, make sure you get that pink line, and it just spaces them out evenly. Now click on button 2, or whichever one's in the center. We're going to make that no. So go to the text and type no. Change the name of it to button no, and that's all for that. And then we'll do this one for details. So text is going to be details, and it's going to be button details. One more thing I noticed is we forgot to get rid of the text on the form. So click on the form, go to its text property, and just delete that. And then hit the save button. Now go to your form and right click anywhere, and go to view code. The first thing I'm going to do is get rid of the namespaces we don't need. The other ones we're going to need right now are system and systemwindows.forms. So don't forget, the first thing I'm going to do is change these public access modifiers to internal. Next, we're going to add the three private fields we need for this class. The first one is going to be a private I Sharp updatable interface, and it'll call it application info. That will be the reference to the application we want to update. The next one is going to be a private Sharp update XML, and we'll call this update info. This will be a reference to the update information that we get from the server. And the last private field we're going to have in this class is a private Sharp update info form, and I'll call this update info form. And this is just going to be a reference to the form we made a couple videos ago, showing the more detailed view of the update. Now let's move on to the constructor. Let's change the parameters. We're going to make it take an I Sharp updatable interface, and we'll call this application info. And also we'll take a Sharp update XML, and we'll call this update info. After the initialize component call, we're going to set our private fields to the values from the arguments. So this.application info equals application info. 
and then same for the update info. Then after that we're going to set the text of the form equal to the program name so it looks like it's part of your app. So this.text equals this.applicationInfo.application name. If you want you can also add some text saying dash update available. The next thing we want to do is set the forms icon to the application icon. So we'll check if it's null. If this.applicationInfo.application icon does not equal null, then we'll set this.icon equal to this.applicationInfo.application icon. Then we want to set the text of the label new version to the version number of our update. So we'll write this.labelNewVersion.text equals, and we're going to do a string.format here. Inside the format we'll do new version colon and then our placeholder. And for the argument we'll pass it this.updateInfo.version.toString. And that is all for our constructor. Now we're going to register the handlers for our button click events. Go back to our form. Let's double click on the yes button. When somebody clicks the yes button, we want to set this.dialogResult equal to dialogResult.yes. This will just tell the parent form that yes was selected. Then after that, just type this.close, which will close the form. Let's go back and double click the no button. You guessed it. We're going to set this.dialogResult equal to dialogResult.no. And that just means the opposite, that no was pressed. And we'll close the form again. Let's go back to our form, double click on the details button. For this one it will be a little bit different. We're first going to check if our sharp update info form reference, which is update info form, equals null. And if so, we'll create a new one. But if it's not null and they click it again, we'll just use that same reference. That might be easier to understand if I code it right now. So if this.update info form equals null, then what we want to do is create a new one. So this.update info form equals new sharp update info form and we'll pass it this.application info and this.update info. These are the parameters that the sharp update info form needs as we set up in the other video. So if it equals null and we set up a new form, or if it does not equal null, well, we want to show it. So this.updateInfoForm.showDialog, and then we'll pass it this, which is the parent window. Go ahead and hit the Save button, and you have successfully created the Sharp Update Accept form. That's all for this video. In the next video, we're going to start writing the Sharp Updater class. This will bring all these forms and classes together and handles the actual updating of the applications. Go ahead and hit the Like button if you like this, subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.